Hello everyone, and welcome to the Capstone Project 1 section of the course. We've learned a lot about HTML and CSS, two major components of any website, and I want to congratulate you for making it this far into the course. Before we move on to Bootstrap, which is actually going to simplify a lot of our work with CSS, let's take a moment to practice everything we've learned so far with a quick Capstone project. You're going to be creating a mock landing page for a startup. And the landing page will have a form and lead to a thank you page. It's a pretty simple page, but it will help you practice what we learned about HTML and CSS so far. However, I want you to note that this Capstone project is optional, and there are really three ways you can approach it. The first way is if you already feel confident in HTML and CSS, maybe you've already studied them, or you just wanted a quick refresher, so you saw a few lectures in the last few sections, or maybe you already knew them completely. You can feel free to just skip this project and move on straight to Bootstrap or whatever sections you want to continue to. Or, as a second option, you can just follow along with the solution videos instead of trying the project on your own first. And then the third way to go about this capstone project is to try to recreate the landing page before watching any of the walkthrough solution videos. So again, feel free to skip it, just follow along with the solution videos, or recreate it and then watch the solution videos. It's totally up to you. Okay, let's take a quick look at the landing page, see the requirements, and then you can get started and decide what you want to do. All right, so here I am at the landing page. This is the welcome to the landing page where a startup that does something. We have two paragraphs of Laura Mipsum, and then it says sign up for our upcoming launch. And at the bottom, we see a form that ha asks for your first name, your last name, and email, and then it has a sign me up button. So what I want you to do is to recreate this landing page. It has a heading one, a heading two, two paragraphs, and then at the bottom we have this form that asks for your first name, last name, email, so make sure you use the proper form tags if you're going to be building this. And we have a kind of a giant submit button that says sign me up. And note that it also has rounded corners, so see if you can figure out how to do that. And also note that it's colored. The last thing I want to point out is using some CSS we've been able to add a bit of a, a border to this on the left right hand side of the text content and also on the bottom but not at the top. So see if you can figure out how to do that as well. And then lastly, if you actually fill out the information and then we'll just put some random email address there. If Upon hitting sign me up, it should take you to some sort of thank you page. So thanks for signing up, I'll reach out to you soon. And we see that kind of border around the text. All right, see if you can recreate this really simple landing page. So again, it's just this landing page, and then when, upon clicking the sign up button, it should take you to some sort of thank you.html file that you have separately there. If you have any questions, feel free to post them to the Q&A forums. But again, feel free to either skip this, follow along with just the solution videos, or try it out on your own first, and then watch the solutions video. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Capstone Project 1 Solutions Lecture. In this lecture, we'll just begin coding out an example solution for the Capstone Project. Let's hop to our editor and get started. Okay, so here I have the text editor open, as well as the example of what we eventually want the landing page to look like. Say welcome to the landing, landing page, I'll scroll down, when we hit sign me up, it takes us to a thank you page. So let's focus on that right now, and I'm going to need basically three files. One HTML file for this main page one HTML file for the thank you page, and then a CSS file for the CSS of the project. Let's start out by creating the HTML for the main project page, this landing page. So I have a HTML file called project.html. It's actually currently linked here. So I'm going to refresh, it's cleared now, and we should have a blank slate to begin with. So let's refresh, we'll expand this just a little bit and decrease this browser so it matches up. And let's get started. So what we're going to do first is actually type in HTML and do the autocomplete there. And then let's give this something like project, or you could call it landing page. And then we also want to make sure that this is eventually linked to that project.css file, or whatever you happen to call the CSS file for this project. So there's our style sheet. And then what we want to do is have that heading one that says something like, welcome to the landing page and since we're a startup we'll have heading two we'll say we're a startup that is cool or it does something whatever you want to say is totally fine 
And then we want some filler text, so we'll add in a paragraph there with lorem ipsum. We'll put in another paragraph again with lorem ipsum. And then what we want to do is add in the form. So the form is also going to come here. And what we'll do is say h2, say something like sign up for our launch. Call the form tag. And right now we'll just give it no class. We'll actually we'll call it, call it the class email form in case we want to ever access it. But remember, we want to link to the thank you page upon and the action call upon hitting that submit. So I want to make sure that my action goes to thankyou.html, and then that means this method needs to be get. And I know we haven't discussed really post versus get yet. We will in a future lecture, but for right now, you should just know that from our previous discussions in the HTML forms lectures. Okay, so we had three inputs we wanted. We had the first name, the last name, and the email. So let's put these in. We want the input. This type is going to be just a text input. And we'll give the name of this to be first, so I can reference it later. We have another input that's also text. We'll give it the name last. We have another input, and that's going to be an email input. And we'll just give it the name email. And it would be also smart to pass in values right now, but we're really not doing anything since this is just a shell landing page. We're not actually accepting these values, so we won't put anything for input right now. What we do want to do is add in some labels. So we'll say this label is for first so that it matches the name. And then let's say first name for this label. The second input should also have a label that's going to belong to last and we'll call it last name. And then finally we want a label here and this is going to be the label for email. Remember it's just matching the name here and then we'll say email. So let's save this, refresh and see what we have so far. It's looking pretty good. I'm zoomed in, so the font's a little weird. But we can see here that I have, welcome to the landing page. We're a startup, that's cool. Let's change that. Save it and refresh. We're a startup that is cool. We have two paragraphs of lower MIPSUM, sign up for launch, first name, last name, and email. Something that you may notice, however, is that the first name, last name, and email inputs are all on the same line. There's a couple ways we can take care of that. One way we showed earlier was to put in a blank paragraph in between these to try to get those line breaks. So if I click save here, I can see that inputting that fake paragraph or empty paragraph gets me what I was looking for. The other way to do this, which is a little better, is by using a break tag. And a break tag basically just says, hey, break to a new block. And that can be used with this command. You just put an open symbol, br, and that's your break tag. And you can actually just type in BR and it will automatically fill that in for you. And then we can put in one more BR here. So we can save that, refresh, and we can see we have that line break. But then the issue of this uh, break is that they are very close together. So what we end up having to do is add in a break to the labels as well. So we can add in those breaks. So it might have been a little easier just to do those two paragraph calls but it looks a little more professional and nicer to use the actual breaks. Since the paragraphs aren't being used, you should probably use breaks even though there are more of them. It looks a little more professional and nicer because the actual use case of the break is being used here versus the paragraphs themselves. All right, so looks like everything's done for the HTML on the project page. Let's open up the thank you. Actually, we still need to do the submit button. So let's put, type that in real quick. We'll say input submit. And the value for this guy is going to be sign me up. And let's give it an ID so we can edit it later. Because remember, we're going to try to make these corners rounded on this. So we'll give it the ID sub. Refresh, and we see sign me up. Great. So let's continue. We're going to open up the thank you HTML. Here it is blank right now. Let's start by just typing in HTML, 
saving this. We want to make sure that we are linking to the eventual CSS file, which is going to be project.css or whatever you happen to have called it. Save that. Then I'm going to add in heading one, say something like, thank you for signing up. And then we'll also add in a heading two that says something like, we'll reach out to you soon, exclamation point. Okay, so, so far what we've done is we said, we have our thank you HTML set up, our project HTML set up. So if those both saved, if I refresh this and add in some context to these guys, so at gmail.com and click sign me up, boom, now I get the thank you for signing up. The last thing I wanna do is change the font right now. We're still on the default Times New Roman, let me just make this a little nicer by choosing a Google font. So I will open up a new tab to fonts.google.com. Roboto is a really nice font that I like a lot, but let's choose something a little more fun. So Sanista, that looks pretty cool. So I'm going to add that. It says one family selected. I'm going to copy and paste this link and I'm going to make sure that it's in both the thank you and project files. And then I'm going to copy and paste the thing I need to specify for CSS, which means I should open up my CSS file and then put in something like body and then just copy and paste that font family. So let's save that, save this, save that and refresh to make sure the font has changed. And there it is. Welcome to the landing page. Everything's looking good here. All right, so next thing we have to do is just edit the CSS to match what we had earlier. We're going to continue editing the CSS in the very next lecture. So you can take some time just to go over everything we did in the HTML. I know we went through it a little bit quickly in this lecture, so feel free to take your time with the actual HTML notes that are available to you under the Capstone Project 1 folder or just uh, watch this lecture at a slower pace or at a faster pace if I'm still too slow for you. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture where we'll finish off this project by editing the rest of the CSS file. Hello everyone and welcome back to this continued solutions lecture of the Capstone Project 1. We're going to continue right where we left off last time and finish the project by just editing the CSS file to make the styling look the same as to what we wanted the Capstone Project 1 to look like. Let's jump to the editor and browser and get started. Okay, so here I am at my editor. What I'm first gonna do is edit the main things in the body that I want to change. We've already taken care of the font family. The next thing I wanna do is take care of the background color. So remember the background color was actually a dark background. So I'll allow you to choose just any color you want that's uh, dark or any light color, it doesn't really matter. That's not really the point of this exercise. The background color that I ended up choosing was hex code 011 six two seven and because we have a dark background color it means the actual color of our text which we can call by just color needs to be a lighter color or it can just be white or cream so i choose hex code fdfff c colon so let's make sure that worked out we'll refresh this page great so here we can see we're back to the dark blue and now the white text Next thing I want to do is actually align everything to be centered. So I will say text align center. Refresh, make sure that works. Everything's looking great there. Now let's work with that border. So the border is actually going to be quite thick. The, sol the official solutions have it at 60 pixels, but I'm a little zoomed in here. So let's just do something like 40 pixels and let's make it a solid border. And here we can actually use a hex code again. And the hex code I did was a teal color. So we said 2 E C 4 8 6. Again, don't worry if your colors don't match exactly. You really have all the flexibility you want as far as the colors go. But here we have the border looking good. But remember that we also wanted to get rid of this top border, which means I can just say border top and assign it to be zero pixels. And that's a very quick way for us 
to essentially get rid of that top border and leave it to be that background color. And then finally, if I want to make the call even closer, I can call something like margin to be zero pixels to try to slim down the distance between the border and the actual edge. So again, if I comment that out and refresh this, I can see there's a little bit of gap between the border and the edge of the uh, browser there. If I undo that to give it a zero pixel margin, then I squeeze all the way to the end. Okay, so now let's take care of some of the individual elements. So the paragraph, we already have that color working correctly because it's in the body. What we might want to do is add a little more padding. So let's just practice doing that. I'm going to say padding on the top is something like 5%. Padding on the left, we can say 20%, and we can say padding on the right is 20%. So we can save that and refresh over here, and now that's been able to kind of elongate the landing page for us. So it looks a little more like the solutions. And then finally, we also want to start editing some of the sizes here. So if you look here on the first name, last name, email, and the form in general, things are looking a little smaller than, or actually the same size as the paragraph, but we want them to be uh, a little larger. So they're looking a little smaller in reference to the solution. So let's expand that. Something I can do is try calling form and say everything in the form tag has a font size and call it with e EM. So it's in relationship to everything else, to the body text. So if I refresh this, now we're looking at a much larger font size here. And if I don't like the spacing here, I can also add a margin. So I can say something like margin, or I could even just give it to the bottom and give it a small margin, like something like 10 pixels. And again, this is really up to you. This is just so that border doesn't touch that bottom button. And now let's talk about that bottom button. Remember we gave that bottom button an ID called sub, so I can say hashtag sub, and let's give it a color background. So we'll say background color, and the solutions lecture was gold, so that's what we'll just give it. In my case, the hex code I found was FF9F1C. Let's refresh this, make sure it worked. Looks like it's gold now. Now let's make it much larger. So let's add in a height, we'll say about 80 pixels, and we'll also give it a width of, let's make it a little larger, something like 150 pixels. Save this, refresh. Okay, it's looking pretty large now. Let's continue. Let's give it a bit of a margin, so it's not directly touching that email, and we'll give it something like a four pixel margin there. Looks a little nicer since it's not directly touching. And if we wanted, we can make the top margin a little better. So we'll say something like, whoops, four pixels, something like margin top. Let's specifically give that to be, let's say triple that, 10 pixels. So we refresh and it looks a little nicer in the spacing here. Great. Now, finally, a couple things we wanted to do is the font size is a little small. So I'll call font size again, say 1.5 EM. And I also want to show you the trick for curving the button. So right now by default, the button is square. If I want to give it some curve, the term for that is border radius. And then we can define a certain amount of pixels that we want the radius borders to have, which will basically just round the corner. So if I refresh this, I can see it says sign me. And right now the font is a little too big so what we can do is actually just call it back to, let's say 1EM, see if that fixes it. Sign me up, okay, that's looking good. So our actual font size is okay. And it looks like everything is working. So let's try this now. We'll say, hello, first name, fill in the last name, give some email, click on sign me up, and it takes me to thank you for signing up. So we're able to just quickly walk through an example landing page. Obviously it doesn't do much. This was more just for you to practice looking at something and then recreating it 
And so far, looks pretty good. Uh, feel free to play around with it a lot more. Feel free to explore the official solutions that I've left for you in the downloaded folder. They're a little different than what we went through here, but basically the same idea. Okay, if you have any questions, feel free to post to the Q&A forums, and I'll be happy to help you out. I'll see you at the next lecture.